hey, these people who play our Pokemon games, they probably want to be movie stars. And now, coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's the one, the only, Pucko Podcast! And welcome to the 359th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with the man, the legend, the guy who spells his name with a Z because it sharpens the image of his name, Scrawn. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Zakron, and I'm here to uh, play Pokemon stuff. Play Pokemon? I don't know if that's proper, but we also have, uh, we also have. Oh man, I, I, the magnetic personality himself, Viger. Not dead. I'm not, alive. Not dead. <laughs> why, why would you be dead? I haven't been on for like months. <laughs> All right. I think the last regular show he's been on was in like May. No, the last regular show I was on was freaking PuckleCon. <laughs> That's true. Oh, that one doesn't count anyway. That's so let's just... check that trivia leaderboard and all the way at the <laughs> it bottom. It reset like twice since you've been on. It's fine. <laughs> it's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll get fine. you on there. You can get your $20 credit, you know, over at <laughs> uh, over at PokemonCenter.com, courtesy of Basket. But, of course, welcome to the show. If you're new, welcome. If you're old, Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions. Like, I say of course as if, like, it's obvious. It should be at this point. We've been doing this 359 freaking times. Yeah, but if this is, like, your first episode, you're just like, Puckle, of course it stands for the Pokemon Underground Champions League. What else could it stand for? The People's Union of Civil Liberties? That doesn't exist. (laughs) The Purdue University Cyclotron Laboratories? That doesn't exist either. (laughs) Okay? So... (laughs) <laughs> these are both things by the way that exist that both use the acronym puckle and i feel really bad because i totally destroyed the reputation for the people's union of civil liberties because if you google puckle we are the number one search result and this isn't even based on like my bias like google search history if you use an incognito tab and you google puckle you get pokemon the puckle of pokemon podcast and then like if you keep going down a little bit you'll find the people's union of civil liberties Wait a minute. Are you telling me I've been in this community for six years and it doesn't stand for people undergoing critical liposuction? <laughs> that one's that one's actually not a real thing. I the two that I mentioned are real things. <laughs> this was the first step to my treatment, Thatch. <laughs> <laughs> but Welcome to the show where we talk everything Pokemon, whether it be the trading card game, the video game, or even Pokemon Quest that one time and probably never again. You put so, Pokemon in and we're going to be talking about it to some degree. Yeah, I mean, we've probably talked about it at least once if it if it was ever a thing. Um, I think there there are a couple exceptions. I don't think we hit on a few topics in the Pokemon world, uh, the Pokemon community, I should say, like the Pop-Tarts or like the cereal I was gonna say <laughs> mac and cheese. Though to be fair, like right now, I went. I was at the grocery store yesterday, and I saw the uh, Frankenberry and Boo uh, Booberry like cereals because yeah. it's that time of year now, and yeah. I was pretty hyped to get some. And I was, uh, I just didn't. I, I, I held it back only because I'm trying to lose weight, and I mm-hmm. have to have some self control. So. We'll you see want to know <laughs> if there's if there is one thing that will always get me incredibly incredibly angry. It's whenever we start so prematurely celebrating holidays that have no business in the months that we're in right now. 
Because it's like the last week of September, my convenience store rolled out its first Christmas scratcher, and I was so what? angry. Jingle what? bells, jingle bells. <laughs> I was so freaking angry. Well, the Puckle Advent calendar starts next week anyway, so. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's such it's a like bad I'm idea. To, I'm trying to be child friendly here, but there are some choice words that I would be using in this situation. <laughs> right now. No, uh, we are going to do the advent calendar this year, though. I'm pretty excited for it. I found a way to make it a bit more automated, so I'm I am definitely looking forward to that. Uh, we awesome. just need to we need to get the list together. We don't have the list yet. We know like oh, one I, thing that's going to be on the list. On that. There will probably be like 20 deli birds and. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we can send out more Margarets for those who missed their first chance. Well, the Margaret was were only for so the Margarets for those of you wondering it was a was a giveaway that we do for Patreon because if you are a patron on Patreon, I believe at the five dollar tier or higher, we do a, a monthly giveaway, and this was just a uh, test run and of the new system, and so we gave mm-hmm. away shiny Alolan Golem that Scrawn insisted we call Margaret. <laughs> They're all named Margaret. <laughs> why? Why are they named Margaret? Um, okay, so I work. I used to work with this tiny short lady. Well, I, I guess that's the same thing. But I, I used to work with this lady, and she had a mustache. And okay, so this is offensive. This is an offensive story. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I named a lowland golem like my lowland golem Margaret, and then made you name all of. The ones we gave away Margaret to. Well, now I feel dirty. A <laughs> uh, and Golem blows me away only because I don't know why. I don't know how you get to the point when you're making Pokemon. Like, I understand some designs are out there, but this one was just like, man, what if we made Golem a real gun? And somebody was like, <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. And then, then we just stopped. They just stopped thinking about it. They're like, "Yeah, well, that's where we stopped. That's that's the end." Go- Golem is now a railgun. I really like it. Um, I don't like how like they when they give you know certain Pokemon you know like mustaches and stuff. You know, like Alakazam, Probopass, uh, and you know Alolan Golem. Because I think those like, are the only ones with mustaches. I think there's I. I I don't actually know any more mustache Pokemon. Hold on, hold on. Pokemon with <laughs> Google <Spirit>. mustache. <laughs> I just you're gonna get like poorly drawn mustaches on every Pokemon that exists. Oh, right, here we go. We got we got Kadabra, Alakazam. We have Samurai. We have uh... Samurai. I guess I guess so. Yeah. Well, the uh, Herdier line. Crit yeah. It's stuff, it's stuff like you know when you get like. You know, female Rain. Mr. Mimes or something. Mm. I don't know. Really like. And then there's just a bunch of Pokemon with mustaches, but Lola and Rattata. Yeah, uh, some of those make sense with like whiskers and stuff. Swalot. Anyway, this is really <laughs> off topic. No, that's fine. No, I just wanted to know why they had mustaches or why it was named Margaret. And you've answered that question substantially. So if you yes. haven't guessed what the topic is today, it's Pokemon with mustaches. <laughs> yeah, Pokemon oh, no. and facial hair. Where does it end? <laughs> <laughs> that's the top. We sh- that's a better topic. We should switch topics right now, guys. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I could handle that. I don't know that I could handle that. I don't know if that's twenty minutes of content right there. I don't think that's clickbaity enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Well, there's plenty of other stuff to talk about today, so we are gonna kick it on over uh, to the news. So cue that epic music. <laughs> Radio Tower. This just in. And on to the news. In the news, we have a few things. Of course, this is the Pokemon Go segment, as it always is, which is which is depressing, but also the reality that we live in. So, if you play Pokemon Go from actually now until October 14th at 4 p.m. Eastern, I need to make it very clear it's 4 p.m. Eastern because people constantly ask when Pokemon Go stuff starts and ends. It's always at 4 p.m. Eastern on the day they say it starts and ends. Fun fact. So yep. if, you, if you're if you ever like, man, 
I completed all of my research on the 1st of October, but I still got an Entei and not a Soycoon. What happened? It's because you did it before 4 p.m. Eastern. Because you're not you paying idiot. attention. <laughs> you're, not pay- you're not paying attention. It's just that simple. So if you want to... Uh, if, but right now in Pokemon Go, until October 14th, we have a Psychic-type event called the Psychic Spectacular, Spectacular, which increases spawns of Psychic-type Pokemon for you to go catch. Which is kind of nice, actually. I mean, if you want Alakazam, that's a pretty cool way to do it. Drowsy is now Shiny, and Hypno following that as well. And they Sweet. also uh, have a Lolan Geodude and a Lolan Diglett spawning in the wild again for whatever reason. And because they want cool. to promote their own in app clothing line. In app clothing line, mind you. You can't buy oh this stuff God. physically. It's it's you buy it in game for your avatar. They are <laughs> also have a Pikachu with a new hat that's out as well, with lightning bolts on the hat. And yeah, that that's about it. I, unless you're somewhere special where you can maybe go get a uh, an unknown but that's that's every special event that Pokemon somehow involved in. Uh, don't yeah. forget, though, also Zero Aura, I believe, begins soon at GameStop. I believe that starts this week in the United States. So get your Zero so. Aura core cards so you can download your Zero Aura and be a cool kid. I was doing finger guns right there. We're on an audio <laughs> podcast. That does not translate well. I felt it. I felt yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, everybody. Don't forget to download your first suit. I, I mean... Aura. Uh, also, don't forget that you can go get Zekrom and Reshiram at, at, by going to Target at, in the United States. My favorite thing about Target gives away, giveaways is that typically Target just doesn't care about them and will literally just leave out. If you go to Target, you can go and get your Reshiram and Zekrom cards and you can just pick up a whole stack of them because the guy behind there is really apathetic and doesn't care he's like my cat or doesn't understand <laughs> uh, this is happening it's also happening target has these events also for a very short amount of time compared to something like gamestop which typically does it for like three weeks target's only doing it from the 19th to the 28th uh if you live in canada you get it through the trainer club newsletter which honestly i think is almost arguably worse than having to go to target to get an event Pokemon because the trainers, the trainer club newsletter, I just never trusted to give me something properly in Europe and Australia. You win the lottery again because you can download them over the Nintendo network from October 5th to the 21st. So take that for what you will. Uh, Let's see. Moving on, moving on. Uh, There's some more demos of let's go Pikachu and Eevee, but it's pretty much going to just show you up to the first gym. Like every other demo does. Wait, what? Wasn't there like a co-op, like f- some co-op footage released? Yeah, th- this has been out for a while. Okay, like I just watched it last night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah, they, they announced that with the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's also been shown off at the Nintendo Treehouse during E3. I mean this is months old. You're, this is like four months old. Uh, for like a normal person who's not us who are hyper aware of the news this is probably something that they care about but for us we're just like nah that's that's like four months ago man (laughs) where have you been i'm very oblivious to new game stuff because i try to stay away due to like spoilers and stuff i'm sure there'll be a lot of spoilers in let's go pikachu and let's go eevee yeah that's what i'm seeing and i'm just like what what is this battling (laughs) (laughs) why are that why is your pokemon leveling up by catching other pokemon (laughs) those are the kind of dilemmas i face on a daily basis (laughs) to be fair your pokemon level up now from catching up catching pokemon in ultra sun ultra moon fun fact um, because if you just catch a Pokemon, you gain experience. Boom. Oh, yeah. That's true. That's true. So there's not much difference there. I mean, we can make arguments about Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee being real games versus not real games or something like that, but they, they do follow very traditional mainline goals. I just think like what they are is just that entry point into the series, and I think it's something Pokemon <laughs> kind of needs. I'm just... I'm just thinking, Pokemon has come so far. In order to catch Pokemon now, you uh, feed it a raspberry. But back in my day, we used to throw rocks at my Pokemon. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, also, really interestingly, uh, po- the Pokemon company, Nintendo Creatures Game Freak, the, the pretty much the Pokemon company, trademarked a new word in Jap- or a new thing in Japan called Monpoke. It's Pokemon, but Monpoke. 
and it came with a logo. We don't know what it's for, why it exists. I could see it being a separate entity, but I could also see it being some kind of mobile game that they put in. The, the, yeah, I was about to say, it's it's it sounds smartphone-ish. It really does. I can definitely see it being some kind of smartphone feature that they have that integrates in something with Pokemon. They're doing a really good job lately. Like Their marketing mm-hmm. department is just kicking everything. Uh, they're just hitting every ball out of the field. Like It is a home run every time. I don't like let's go Pikachu let's go Eevee for all of the crap like we give it saying that hey these aren't you know competitive Pokemon games we'll wait for 2019 where we're going to get something competitive something more quote unquote traditional and that let's go Pikachu let's go Eevee I believe is what the is the single smartest marketing decision they have ever had because Mm -hmm. it grabs the let's it grabs the go audience it fills in a year where we wouldn't have gotten a Pokemon game otherwise it satiates Nintendo by being like, hey, look, we put a Pokemon game on the Switch like you wanted us to, but we can actually make a good proper one next year still. Uh, and it's just such a good idea. And mm-hmm. also I get a little cute little Pokeball thing out of it. So I'm, I'm yeah. down. Wow. Look at Thatch talking reasonably. I know. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> it's like he has a degree or something. And then a degree in Pokemon. And yeah. <laughs> a degree in beat. The final piece of news I want to hit on, because I find this very interesting and kind of silly, is that and I don't I don't think I've ever announced this on the podcast, but McDonald's is doing a new Happy Meal toy line next month. <laughs> uh, and the reason this is kind of interesting is because if you look at the McDonald's page, it says that there's a Pokemon Pokemon is next on the roster for what's coming to McDonald's Happy Meals. However, the Pokemon that they use in the artwork are Dialga and Palkia. Which I find very, very interesting. I think Dialga and Palkia are... I mean, that signifies Gen 4 to a lot of people. Especially people my age. And I I can't get it out of my head that those came out over... They came out about 11 years ago. Over 11 years ago now. Diamond and Pearl came out. And it just blows my mind thinking about that. But I want to know if that means that maybe something we're getting in the future is Gen 4. Are they just pushing Gen 4 randomly? I think they could also be doing it because it might be around the time that Go pushes let, uh, pushes Gen 4 out. You know? It's around that time of year. Though the Gen 4 rollout won't be as cool as the Gen 3 rollout, in my opinion. Mm. Mostly because it includes a lot of baby Pokemon, a lot of evolution Pokemon, and a lot of legendaries. So the amount of Pokemon to catch from Gen 4 isn't going to be as high as Gen 3, where you almost I, add 200-some Pokemon to catch, or 100-some Pokemon to catch. If Gen 4 is coming back, what I'm looking forward to is the soundtrack. I've got, like, that's one thing that Gen 4 has every other Gen beat. It's, like, the route soundtrack. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that, oh, it's so perfect for, like, it's, like, obviously based on Hokkaido. It's a cold region. It's got these unique environments, and you just suddenly you feel that really, I want to say homey music, where you just feel really comfortable. Uh, uh, Anyway, that was just a little aside I had. Yeah. I I would be down to see it in the Switch, see a Sinnoh in Switch, right? I don't think mm-hmm. it's coming this year. I think if they're doing anything and trying to hit on Gen 4, it's probably for Pokemon Go. But I would really like to see uh, Gen 4 on the Switch. Though I don't know anymore because the the wrench that got thrown into my understanding of how the Pokemon company is going to decide to make games in the future is Let's Go. Because Let's Go is a remake of Kanto, essentially. And does that mean that we won't get any more quote-unquote remakes like we have been? Like Omega Ruby, Leaf Green, Heart Gold, Soul Silver... Will we not see those in that anymore in the future? Because we have Let's Go to go revisit these regions. Mm-hmm. Will we get, in, instead of in 2020, will we, instead of getting, you know, the amped up version of whatever the 2019 game is, are we going to get uh, Pokemon Let's Go, Totodial, and Chikorita, right? And <laughs> I mean, it probably won't be those two, but it'll probably be something else. I do honestly like Bird Keeper Toby's uh, view on what's going to happen. And what he said was that let's go would it would be smart for them just to do dlc for every region for that because what what pokemon are you going to choose as your mascots for that one i mean i guess you could do let's go ho let's go lugia and things get really confusing let's go meryl let's go pichu bro i'm waiting for let's go woobat yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
and you, you know, oh, oh, man. use heart stamp on everybody. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I see Let's Go. It's a good place. It's a nice entry point to the series. You can get people in who have never played Pokemon before or have, haven't played Pokemon in a long time because you reintroduce them to the series with a couple new mechanics because, I mean, if we look at Let's Go, you've got the physical special split, which hasn't been all like a mainstay in the series until Gen 4, which is when a lot of people stopped. I, would, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I'm very excited to see the outcome of Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee, like once they're released. I'm more excited for these games because of the marketing perspective than I am anything else, which is really sad, but I'm really excited to see them release just because of that. I also, I do want to play them and just have this Pokeball controller that I can break my TV with. Uh-huh. Though I, I did show you guys today, but I haven't shown anybody. I didn't, I haven't talked about it on the show and I think everybody deserves to know Hori is coming out with a wireless charger for the Pokemon, uh, the Pokeball Go Plus. Yeah. And it looks like a little Pokemon Center thing. And it's adorable. I'm probably going to pick one up just because it's very cute. I and probably will too. It's $20. I've already, spent, I've already spent $100 on getting the Pokeball Plus bundled together with Eevee and everything. So we're just going to go with that anyway. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. And that is going to be it for the news. So we are going to kick it on over to Puckles Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their innate Pokemon knowledge. And on to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz your co-host on their innate Pokemon knowledge. Of course, that means no internet, no cheating, no phoning a friend, just using what's in your heads to answer these questions. Whether it Sounds be, like a plan. Yeah. I uh, mean, you can only use what's in your head. You don't. You get nothing else. Uh, so uh, there are going to be five questions today. <clears throat> Each question is going to be worth one point apiece. However, one question will have a bonus point. And you do have one hint to use as a lifeline throughout the entire thing. However, if you get all the questions correct without using the hint, you can cash it in for another point for a possible total of seven. You guys are competing against all of your fellow co-hosts in a competition and a race to 30 points. First, the top gets a $20 credit to PokemonCenter.com because Basket made me specify that it was a $20 credit. And, <laughs> and so... That is where we're going to end it there. But we are going to kick things off with our first question about Black and White 2 coming to you from Sparky. Oh, the one game I haven't finished. No, right. I think you can get this one. This one's not terrible. I'm like three-fourths of the way through. So the first time you versus the Elite Four, you fight, you face the Elite Four in Black 2 and White 2, what is Iris's highest level Pokemon? Hmm. It could be Haxorus. Um, it could be Haxorus. Or it could that's be like her exclusive kind yeah. of. Or it could uh, be Hydreigon. Hydreigon. Does she have a uh, Hydreigon? I, never I think Hydrogen. so. Um, that's more of Getsus's exclusive, I think. Right, right. Um, like, Drudigon is a possibility. Um, Haxorus just feels more like That's right. It. Mm-hmm. Did you say specific, or it's just in both black and white too? Because I know it's in like, both. It's in both. It's the same one in both games. Okay, because I know like white two is kind of like the easier one due to certain reasons. <sighs> Again, I wouldn't know. I didn't play either one. Um, you know, I think our best bet is just Haxorus. Um, yeah, it could be something else, but I don't really know. Maybe. Oh, maybe it's Dragonite. Because Maybe. she has a Dragonite in um, the anime. Oh, uh, boy. Mm. So Haxorus or Dragonite? I just go with Haxorus. Yeah, Haxorus just seems like the better option. All right. Haxorus is correct. Yeah. It's Haxorus at level 59. So there you go. That is, you, you guys are one for one so far in your trivia about uh, Black and White 2. However, we're going to do the next one, and the next question is going to be about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Oh, yeah. From Dr. Okay. Shamu. Oh, God, no. And he wants to know, what was Deoxys' gimmick in Mystery Dungeon Red and Blue? 
Oh my god, this isn't fair. Uh, okay, is it like Deoxys' usual gimmick where it just like changes forms? Because that's what I'd guess it would be like if it was from anyone other than Dr. Shamu. Uh, <laughs> or it's just, yeah, or it's just warping around. I don't really know either. Again, didn't play the Red, yeah, Red Rescue Team or something. Um, uh, Deoxys' gimmick. Well, in Mystery Dungeon, let's think about the dynamics of the game. In boss battles, sometimes bosses will, like, summon, like, other a Pokemon. Or something, yeah. Um, Deoxys doesn't really get along with any other Pokemon, though, so I don't see that being a thing. Yeah. Uh, its gimmick is pretty much to switch forms, so I could see, like, stat boosts being a major part of that. Um, it could have, like, what would be Deoxys' move? I guess, like, Psycho Boost, but Lugia yeah. had that boost. Um... Hmm. You know, I'm just going to say, like, something to do with form changing. Is that your final answer? You know what? I think we should use a hit on this one. No, maybe. Do you think so? I don't know. I'll leave that up to your call. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we're wrong, so might as well use the hint. Um, it ha- yeah, I mean, I don't know how to give you a hint um, here, because it's a very straightforward <laughs> gimmick. Um... <laughs> That's oh, your hint. No. It's very straightforward. Uh, it has it has to do with something that only Deoxys can do in the main games at that point. Oh no, I feel silly. So yeah, uh, it is a form change. Yeah, I'm gonna say form changing. That is correct. It is Deoxys uh, changing forms. Uh, you had it correct. Uh, it changed. It would randomly change forms depend uh, every time you change the floor. So I mean, it would just do everything. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> So, we are going to move on to another question about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Okay. Uh, from, of course, the wonderful Dr. Shamu. Oh, no. Oh, of course. <laughs> and he wanted to know, uh, what three Pokemon made up the second boss in Mystery Dungeon Red and Blue? Wait, hell, I know. <laughs> Wait a minute. What three Pokemon made up the second boss there were Pokemon. three Pokemon in that boss encounter that you fought. Right. In red and blue. I don't really remember red and blue. I... Uh, is this the one with the Mankey? Because I know you have to fight for, like, chestnuts or something in red and blue. Let's see. The first boss in red and blue, wasn't it, like, a Garmory? And then the second boss... Or, no, like... Oh, maybe it was Manectric. Oh God, it's been, I uh, it's been so long. Um, I think the first boss is where you have to rescue Diglett, and it changes based on the game. So it's either like a Skarmory or a Manectric. It's a territorial Pokemon. The second boss, yeah. I think he had to get a Chestnut from the forest, uh, because Mankey wanted the Chestnut. But what was guarding the Chestnut? Oh my God. Three Wait, Pokemon what, what? were guarding the chestnut. The chestnut. You are correct. Shift train to Nuzly for some call. Uh, I want to say, was it like a primate and two Mankey? That, that's my guess. <laughs> this is just as good as mine. Yeah, let's go with that. That is unfortunately incorrect. The answer is Blue Rescue Team, who consists of Medicham, Gengar, and Ekans. Ah, uh, Team Meanies. Or whatever oh, they call themselves. Yep. Well, That's okay. the answer. Yep. Medicham, Gengar, and Ekans. Yep. They fought and you I... to stop you from getting it. Well, that's edgy. That is edgy. <laughs> I remember that know. Gengar being super edgy, and then, like, at the end, he had a, you know, come into, you know, Arceus moment. Oh, <laughs> right. So our next he question Jesus. <laughs> is our bonus point question. It is... Uh, it is, I think, pretty easy. I'm gonna. So, uh, I usually would just give you one point per answer. However, I'm going to give you one point per two answers, or per three answers. I'm gonna say per three answers because there's six oh, of them. No. <laughs> um, and if you can get, if you can name all six, you'll get two points. Okay. Uh, okay. So every three that you answer, you'll get it. So I want to know what are the names of the Pikachu clones throughout the series of Pokemon. Okay, the Pikachu so. clones. This is all Uncle Oshawott. Here I you go P- for it, Viger. 
Pichu wouldn't really count because it's a pre-evolution and it's basically a Pikachu and a, it's just basically half a Pikachu. Meryl was Pika Blue and it's a, its own Pokemon and everything. So Pichu's more or less the quote-unquote Pikachu clone of Gen 2, but that doesn't really count. So Plusle and Minun, Pachirisu, Amalga, Dedene, and Togedemaru. Yep. That is correct. That is two points for you guys. You guys are at four points so far. <laughs> and so, of course, that means our next question is going to be a base stat question. However, gotcha. because I've exhausted most of the base stats... And I didn't feel like looking one up today. I've got another one for you guys. <laughs> that has to do with uh, has to do with base stat questions. And I want to know which Pokemon has the highest base stat boost upon evolution. Oh, nice. base stat boost. Okay, so it's probably one of the ones that are normally really low. Yeah. So like Magikarp to Gyarados. Wimpod or... to Golisopod. Yeah, yeah, or. Um... Sunkern to Sun to Sunflora, but that's a pathetic Pokemon in and itself. So any boost is a big boost for it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I'd probably guess it's Magikarp. I feel like it, but maybe there's something that's come out sooner or uh, after Magikarp. Yeah, Larvesta maybe. No, yeah, Larvesta is Larvesta is pretty good already. It has a pretty high attack stat. <laughs> yeah, boy. I'm gonna need an answer. Yeah, yeah. Hold your horses. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna just go with Magikarp because it's the most obvious. Um, although it could very well be something else. Yeah, Magikarp so is. Correct. Yeah! Uh, that gives you guys five points today, so that does change up the board because everybody's actually super close right now. Um, Sweet. Except gonna... for me. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's still super close. <laughs> what is it? What is the... What is the I'm getting place? there. I'm doing... I'm clicking sort right now. So in first place, tied, we have Gator and Basket with 12 points. In third place, we have Whimsicott with 11 F- tied for fourth place now, we have Dr. Shamu and Scrawn with six points. We have Sublime and Viger tied for sixth place with five points. Maximus in eighth with four. Sigma with in ninth place with three. Jushiro in tenth place with two. And Snag bringing up the rear with one. And Bosephus has yet to get on the board, but I think he'll remedy that next week. So that is it for this month's edition or this week's edition of puckles pokey quiz we will be right back at you with the topic after this short break ciao i'm the fluffiest whimsicott and i want to tell you how you can enjoy puckle even more and make it better at the same time first join our discord server you can hang out with us and a ton of cool people take part in our tournaments and get all our news right out of the gate you can also interact and keep up with us on twitter on facebook and on our subreddit if you love live content, we're on Twitch at least twice a week with all sorts of streams, from viewer battles to shiny hunting to PTCGO. If you want to drop a little bit of your extra cash on us in exchange for cool stuff, we have both a Patreon and a Tee Public store, so be sure to check this out. And finally, there's so much great Puckle content that we're now on two feeds. Make sure you are subscribed to both Puckle and Puckle Plus, so you don't miss out on any of our sideshows. And drop us a review while you're at it, we really appreciate your feedback. Thank you. And on to the topic. The topic is going to be features in Pokemon that nobody used. It's Ron's words, not mine. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll be talking about that stuff you may or may not know about that really was put into a game as a test and then ultimately never used again. I don't know if the word test is proper. I feel like yeah. there's just like some side project. Yeah, you know. I feel like it was Sounds some side project right. they had some developer work on over in the corner, and yeah. we're about to crush his dreams again, because they were already crushed because it wasn't popular to begin with. <laughs> so I think we should start with the most obvious, uh, which uh, some side developer, as you said, pro- had this ambitious idea of, hey, these people who play our Pokemon games, they probably want to be movie stars. And probably they put in Pokestar Studios into Black 2, White 2. And 
if you I, don't know what that is, I don't blame you. <laughs> I thought poke. Okay, so I'm definitely not the core demographic for this because I I I have used all of the features that we talked about prior to this, uh, uh-huh. except uh-huh. for uh, the photo spots in Alola. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, and so. I have used Pokestar Studios, and so the idea is you kind of just get put into mock battles. It is stupid. It's not very good. It's like a very watered-down version of something like Movie Studio Tycoon or something, where you go and make movies, and you want to see how well they're done, and it's based on what moves you chose during the battles and how you decided to take out the other Pokemon and stuff like that. So that determines how good the movie is. It's very interesting. It's It's weird. There's some stuff to unlock with it, and if you wonder where Bryce is from Black and White, the seventh gym leader, because he doesn't make an appearance in the normal story of Black and White 2, it's because he's actually a movie star in the Pokestar Studios. And he plays Bryson Man. Really? <laughs> he's the bad That's guy. That's really good. Yeah. Really? And, well, so that was actually, Pokestar Studios was the thing that I thought we were going to get something more like with the Ultra Beast originally in Sun and Moon. Because in Pokestar Studios, you play, you fight against things that aren't Pokemon and things that have weird typings that didn't exist at the time. And it, is, it will be like UFO ship, take it out, and it will be like steel something type, right? And I, I thought that we'd get something similar to that. It's, it's more akin to a, an RPG battle, right? If you were to an yeah. RPG boss battle. Like if you were to play a JRPG, you have bosses that you fight and... In this, you would be able to go fight the Ultra Beast, per se, and go fight the Ultra Beast as R- as JRPG bosses, and then maybe later go catch them in the game, because they're obviously Pokemon. But I-, I think that would have been a cool mechanic for them to have added and kind of upgraded into the full-scale Pokemon world. But I don't know, Pokestar Studios, yeah, people probably didn't use it, because it honestly wasn't that fun. I just did everything for 1,000% completion. In yeah, all of those I, games. I think I played it at the beginning when they force you to do it, and then I just forgot about it. That's like all these main features. They always force you. They're just like, hey, by the way, we put this in this game. Oh, there are a few that don't even force you. Like, the one that comes to mind is if you ever played uh, Pokemon Emerald or Fire Red or Leaf Green, and I think maybe Ruby or Sapphire, there was that multiplayer feature, uh, Dodrio Berry Picking. And this, <laughs> one is, this one is so vague. I didn't even do it, but I know of its existence. I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, so in Please I enlighten me. Moss Deep City in Pokemon Emerald, you had to like connect via it was you couldn't do it via cable because I tried. You had to have the wireless uh adapter. And you had to have more than one person with the wireless adapter, which pretty much was non existent in order to play this mini game. Where you were like a Dodrio and you ate berries. Well, there's a lot of things like that. I mean, in, especially Gen 3. Gen 3 is full of stuff that, at least in the West, we didn't get it because of the fail, the failure of the e-reader in the West. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Because they put a lot of things in. Uh, like in Moss Deep City, there's a door you can go into and you can actually face certain trainers that would come through with e-reader cards which was, I believe, only available in Japan because those e-reader cards never made it to the West. I think the closest thing we actually ever got to an e-reader card in the in the West for something that would interact with your Game Boy Advance games was the Eon ticket. And that only happened if you were actually a subscriber to Nintendo Power. Uh, right. I actually have mine sitting here because I was looking it up online and people were selling them for like 80 bucks. And I was like, oh, can I sell this for 80 bucks? Because I don't really need an Eon ticket card anymore <laughs> for my e-reader. Um, so, but I mean, that was the original, that was the original Eon ticket. I like the way that they upgraded the Noraz, though, by the way. I think that was done really well with the Spot Pass feature. I think Spot Pass is a very cool feature that they could have done more with and they didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that like a lot of people pick on, you know, black two and white two for having a lot of vague features. But I think one of the best features they had was the Pokemon world tournament. But what few people remember before the Pokemon world tournament, there was something similar in only Pokemon platinum version. Yeah. So there was, yeah, in the post game of platinum, you could go to the Island to the top, right. 
and um, this island had three areas. It had the battle area, the resort area, and the survival area. And in Platinum version, in the survival area, there was the one building that you could go into and you could battle like past gym leaders and like Elite Four and champions and stuff. Hmm. And I don't think like anyone did it. It's sort of like how there was that thing, something like the Battle Institute in Heart Gold Soul Silver in oh what 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 city was it? it was Ver- Viridian. It was in Viridian City. So in Heart Gold Soul Silver, what they had instead was you could still battle all of the gym leaders again. It just happened at the dojo in Saffron City. I don't think there's a battle institute in Heart Gold Soul Silver. See, I don't even remember. I just vaguely have recollections of doing something once and then never touching it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the Alola Photo Club. Yeah. The Alola. Uh, <laughs> who needs <laughs> that? Some... Nobody. <laughs> And that's actually a cool feature, like, if you want to, you know, be glamorous and stuff. But I just want to be the very best. I don't want to pick pictures and stuff. Maybe you know how you've been asking for a Pokemon. I might. I'm Pokemon Snap 2 for the Switch or what. Now, here's a small, useless camera feature in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Have fun! I feel like it was their response to the want for a Pokemon Snap 2. However, it was just done so poorly. It just seems like it really it is just like it has no place in a game like that. It's just like, yeah, you you can go and and all this other stuff. Hey, take pictures. The the successor has to be its own thing, because without that, I feel like it waters down the mechanic and then nobody wants to play it. I mean, that because if you if I want to play Pokemon Snap, I want to do a very specific thing and I want to take pictures. I want to sit down and do that. If I'm playing Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon or Sun and Moon, I'm not like, yeah, man, I want to go take a picture of that Pokemon over there. No, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. I want to go play Pokemon. I, I don't need garbage mini games in my actual game uh, unless it's Mantine Surf because Mantine Surf's fun. That's true, but you can beat it in like an hour and a half. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I don't care. That's that, that's why it's a mini game. It's not the real game, right? I mean, Sun and Moon <laughs> itself is like a 30 hour adventure. And at least I can go surf on a Mantine every once in a while. And I'd rather do that to get battle points than go through the battle tree. So if I can put forth a couple of things that I feel like were kind of features nobody asked for and then in response nobody used really. Gen 4, the capsule patches or whatever to Look. decorate your pokeballs and everything it's just like that was is... actually so that was just poorly implemented it was a great yeah. idea it was just poorly implemented yeah. because yeah, the problem oh, with yeah. it was that you couldn't take the pokemon that were in the capsules and put them in the pc with the capsule saved you had to take them out of the capsule so you could deposit them in the pc and i think yeah, that's where the failure was done. If they would have been like, oh, just save that to that Pokeball and it's there forever, done. Everything's good. Um, I think that would have been a feature that would have kept going with the Pokemon franchise. But I think because it was such a clunky feature, it's clunky, that's the word. That's true. I think it just didn't carry over very well. Because I can't sit there and be like, oh, this Pokemon's in a capsule. Got to take it out, put it in there. Because I think it would be really cool to see for competitive battles. Just to see people have, uh, what's it called, have just like their own personalization on doing it, though it does open up some really poor issues because they did used to have lettering that you could put on those. And I could see some like not really great lettering coming out on, yeah. on from some of these Pokemon in competitive battles on stream and stuff like that. You just see, you know, some really offensive words pop up. Yeah. <laughs> but I would I would like at least customization of effects when you do it. We've got the customization for like how you throw the Pokeball now in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. It'd be really cool to be like, oh I throw it, and then like there's a there's like a smoke thing that appears when the Pokemon comes out of his Pokeball or something like that. I think that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Or fireworks from the back or It'd be something. nice. I'm sure everything. they can come up with better ideas than me. It's not mm-hmm. my job. They don't pay me to come up with ideas. Not yet. So who here remembers the intra link? I do. The what now? I never the used ent- it. I never used it, but I remember <laughs> In black, it. white, black, white too. There was the intra link forest, and it had the entree for the intra link, and it had the entree forest in it, where you could like yes. catch the dream Pokemon. But what intra link did was let you like enter other people's games. It was like going. Uh, the equivalent is looking at Animal Crossing New Leaf and how you can go to Dream World, Dream versions of people's towns. 
which is a save version that they uploaded to the internet. It was kind of similar to that, except your friend still had to be playing their game. <laughs> mm-hmm, and you much. were kind of like a ghost, and you didn't even appear in theirs. It's uh, It was the first chance at multiplayer in a Pokemon game that just didn't happen, and now we get Let's Go, where we get kind of multiplayer, but it's broken multiplayer, because it's just like, yeah, 2v1 on the other side. And Sun and Moon, we got the 2v1, which was the challenging version of it. Now it's the easy version of it. Okay, so I think you could appear in their games because I still distinctly remember transforming into a Meowth and then running in front of them to block their paths because Meowth was faster than the typical trainer. Oh, God. <laughs> it was, I was really annoying. <laughs> Nobody used this, so I don't remember, okay? <laughs> right. Uh, I remember borrowing my friend's DS because he had a copy of white and I had a copy of black. And in order to grow the tree in Enterlink, you had to play and do the missions with each other. Mm. So I just farmed missions off of him to like grow my tree to the max length. And I don't remember why, but it was a that was. I don't a think thing. growing the tree does anything. I just was like, I want it to be the biggest tree possible. You know, I don't think that does anything. I'm not gonna lie. I don't I, think it does. I, I, you're pro- we're probably right. That's the sad thing, is that we're probably right. Uh, other things that I thought were useless and were just thrown into things, uh, I don't actually know. They were, I Because I'm not the typical person. I that Enterlink's actually the first one that I never actually partook in, seriously. Oh, that's probably... Hmm. Yeah. What, what, what would be something in, like, Gen 6? Gen yeah, 6? I'm trying to think of Gen 6 stuff. Was it, like, maybe the like the restaurant cafes no No, that was a good that was a good place for grinding out like xp and getting money and stuff yeah people farm those for money and everything because you got a lot of money at the restaurants i i went to those on a daily basis okay Mm -hmm. i like that gen 5 has most of them that's my favorite part yeah is that gen 5 (laughs) has most of them they were just throwing ideas at a wall and hoping that they would stick and they were sticking for them at the time oh (laughs) I remember. Uh, remember that like mansion where you got like titles and yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, that one was kind of cool too. That's a great way to grind money and XP too. Yeah, the Battle Chateau. The Battle Chateau. That's the name of it. Again, yeah. I, after I was done with the restaurants, I'd hit up the club. <laughs> <laughs> you can huh. go do that. Gain your ranks. I mean, it was, I, it was one of those things that I don't think was done well, but it definitely wasn't bad. Yeah, people like the grind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was one of those things that wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Okay. Yeah, if that makes any sense. I, I don't honestly know. I mean, Gen Gen 7 didn't really have much except for the Photo Club. They I, I hate when we get to when like a game's announced and they try to push something like that because I never think it's... Oh, Gen 6. I know what it is. Remember how you could do <laughs> these... Uh, this is a complete aside, but I was thinking about this one. Uh, because Alola had the two different battle clubs. You had the or photo things. You could do the Pokemon Snap feature, but you could also do the thing where you take pictures with your Pokemon, right? You dress them yeah. up. Yeah. And you can have Rollin in a bow tie, the way things were meant to be. Um, <laughs> Sir Rollin. But the thing, there was an equivalent in Gen 6. Remember, you had PR videos. Oh, oh right. You could set up your four-second PR right. video with you and your Pokemon. And it was super pointless. I don't yeah. even remember. Yeah, I it remember was a thing. It now you had your own like little YouTube studio or whatnot. Yep. Let me. Yeah, it was called. It was called the PR videos, and these were actually really stupid. Um, <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm sure somebody is listening to this in their car. And they're like, "Well, I use the PR studios all the time." <laughs> oh, you didn't. <laughs> I made I made the videos all the time. You're lying. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And all the time, all the time. <laughs> I, I do remember. I do remember another thing in a uh, seventh gen that I particularly didn't use, but I don't know. I can't speak for everyone else, but puku muku chucking. I used it a couple of times because it, I mean, it's like a daily you can get money thing from it. They also had that in gen six because you could go work in this hotel and you could make like $200,000 or something a day from doing that. But yeah. Puku Muku chucking, I think they give you like $100,000, $80,000 for just throwing Puku Muku. I mean, it's a cute little thing that I think is better for immersion than anything else. Yeah. In the Pokemon world, because you could be like, oh, yeah, this is a Pokemon thing. That I kind of appreciate. I appreciate things like that because it does actually interact with the story. Mm-hmm. So that, that's that's what I like. Um, oh, man, I miss, I miss the player search system so bad. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, I was just looking. I was, I'm trying to find this PR video thing because it's not even listed on Serebi right now. Um, it, it's like no joke. Um, because I, I wanted to explain to Scrawn how bad it was, but it's so bad that it didn't even make it. <laughs> oh, um, trainer you know PR video. System. That's what it is. Right, right, right. So in Gen Five, again Gen Five. I know we're picking on it, but um, I mean it was the one that was. Player search system in Gen 6, and now we Mm -hmm. have Festival Plaza Gen 7. In Gen 5, there was the lower screen, and in the lower screen, it had three segments. Like, one was online, one was wireless, and one was uh, entree, uh, entry link. What was that called? That was called the, uh, that was called the, uh, what was the Sea Gear. Yeah, right. And you could actually download uh, specific. Uh, what is it like templates oh, yeah. for yeah. your C gear? Mm-hmm. I remember this very and, clearly because I did it. Yeah, I know because you're the kind of guy who like collects the 3ds themes and stuff. I'm awful. <laughs> I'm, you want to you know what's really bad recently? Uh, so th- this is really bad. So a couple of years ago, I'm sure somebody remembers this. The 3ds came out with this thing called Nintendo Badge Arcade. In Nintendo Badge, so the idea is on your 3DS home screen, you could put little badges of like certain video game characters and stuff like that. The problem is it's definitely a pay-to-play type of game, and you can't just like buy it and then have all of them unlocked. You have to go in there and like give them money to play a claw machine to go get these little badges. And mm-hmm. so what's really bad is recently I'm just like, yeah, let's go get those badges. And so I've been dropping like I've been dropping more money than I should into my 3DS. To go collect little Pokemon sprite badges. Like crazy. <laughs> like I have, I think I have uh, something like almost 300 of those badges. Of just like the little Pokemon sprite ones. I think I finished all of Gen 1. I think I have all of Gen 1. Um, but And then the rest of them are scattered throughout the rest of the generations. But yeah, that's what I have. That, I've been doing that recently. And it's horrible. Because it's just like, yeah, I could just drop like $3 into this right now. To get my, uh, to get my <laughs> Ultra Beast badges right now. That'd be great. And then what's really bad is, like, I'll forget if I've cleared one of them out already. And I'll just do it again. It's like, well, I guess I've got three Houndoom now. (laughs) (laughs) It's really bad. Uh, But going back to the PR thing, it was was called Trainer PR Videos. And you had to go to a certain place in Lumio City to shoot a uh, PR video with your trainer and one of their Pokemon. There, There was literally no reason to do it. They were just 11 second long videos that did nothing for you. Couldn't you watch no. trainer other trainers you PR could watch, videos? You could watch other trainers' PR videos, but why? Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's the overall question for that mechanic. Why? Yeah, why? I, I'm sure somebody was like, yeah, this is a really cool idea. But I mean, so it goes back to what makes a good mechanic, and I think that could be the end of the discussion here, like the, the end game here. Like, If they're, if they're going to add something, I feel like it should do something to add to the immersion into the Pokemon world, right? In terms of Pukumuko chucking, I think that's one of the good examples of emerging or immersing yourself into the world. Like, hey, this is something that would be happening in the Pokemon world. Pukumuko are known to wash up on beaches and then die because they dry out. I think it would be really cool to see something like that. Yeah. But PR videos, I don't think add anything. I don't think the photo club adds anything. I could understand um, in terms of taking pictures of the pokemon maybe that helps immerse people into the world because there are certain ones that later in the game where you get to see like a dragonite flying and stuff like that and you could it it could help with world immersion uh but it honestly it just wasn't for me and it might have been yeah. for somebody else because it is part of the things that you need to be able to like complete the trainer passport which is the equivalent of the trainer card now i don't know i don't know what your guys' thoughts are well, i just didn't realize i never i never touched the uh pr videos I mean, I looked at them. I was like, "Oh, here's the lens case, and I can change my eyes." Okay, and then left, <laughs> and then that was that. I think that was the only reason I ever went there was just to get the lens case. I like the features generally. Uh, some I don't like, like you know the photo stuff, mm-hmm. or you know like, uh, well, I really like the custom anything that lets you customize your own. Yeah, you know, look like I really, really like battle poses and like being able to dress up your character. I, it's just does this me and like having this sweet Zoroark sea gear or something, you know? Yep, I think stuff like that. I do like that kind of stuff, and I, I like stuff that honestly just has an in-game effect as opposed to hey, make this PR video so that other people can watch it. 
<laughs> uh, I, I do like stuff like that, preferably. I mean, honestly, you can make the worst mechanic, but say like say like the Pokemon Snap features in Gen 7, if they were at the end, they're just like, oh, by the way, if you do it, you get the super double shiny charm where you get like an extra seven rolls on encounters to try to get a shiny, right? I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking pictures all day. Uh, I'm going to take every picture. So, I, I mean, if they if they want me to use a feature, give me some in-game reward. I think that's the end of it. So Surfing Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no. Um, I, I get flying Pikachus uh, rare, in my opinion. If they give me a flying Pikachu, now we're talking. Um, but that is going to be where we end the topic here, guys. We are going to take a short break, and we'll be right back at you with the Pokemon of the episode. <laughs> episode and welcome to pokemon of the episode our pokemon of the episode this week is national dex number 550 basculin the hostile pokemon now this is going to be interesting because there are two different pokedex entries for this pokemon one based on its red striped and one on its blue striped form so first up the red striped form for ultra moon when a school of basculin appears in a lake everything else disappears except for corefish and crawdont that's how violent Basculin are. And for the blue stripe form, again for Ultra Moon, some people call it the thug of the lake. Whether the differences in color are meaningful is not yet known. So the answer is yes, they are meaningful. Basculin is really interesting in that it's two forms, it's red stripe and it's blue stripe. It's something that you never really think about, but there actually is a difference. Only in ability, though. Ability and looks, I guess. Because they both can get... a adaptability and they both have a hidden ability in mold breaker but red stripe form has reckless and blue stripe form has rockhead both of these deal with moves that deal recoil damage which actually basculin does learn a good amount of basculin is of course going to be in pu i don't want to talk about zu it's probably there too <laughs> however uh i mean it gets a couple of moves though that do use uh that will use reckless and rockhead however i do think you could probably get away better with adaptability for those of you at home Adaptability is the ability in which I believe if it is a stab attack, you get times one times two instead of 1.5. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's right. Yep. So your stab <clears throat> is times two instead of 1.5, which means you go ahead, use Waterfall. He gets Aqua Jet. Do that. He also gets some decent coverage as well. He gets Zen Headbutt. He does get Superpower. And he also gets Ice Beam. Uh, he gets Ice Beam. He gets Bounce if you want to try Flynium Z. Uh, basculin. I want to. I want to see a basculin team now. I think it's going to be garbage. He does get head smash though. If you if you want to run rocket or re, uh, reckless, that's a really good way to try. Um, you he also gets icy wind like everybody else. He does get mud shot if you're like man. I want to get that special ground coverage. Um, <laughs> Scald's always a good choice. He gets superpower, uh, which I believe I mentioned previously. And aqua jet. That's yeah. These are about it. He, his move pool is pretty shallow. He. He's in PU, though, and I'm actually really surprised by his stats because he's got a base 70 HP, which isn't terrible. Base 92 attack, which isn't terrible down in PU. Uh, a defense of 65, me- a special attack of 80, which isn't terrible. Uh, a special defense of 55 and a base speed of 98. Like, 98's not terrible, especially in PU. <laughs> Basculin is pretty much not terrible. He's not terrible. I mean, you could run Life Orb, 252, Naive, Jolly, however you want to run it. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of how you're going to run it. And if you're going to run Adaptability, you can choose if you want to go blue or if you want to go red. Your choice. It's all Basculin. Yeah. I, I, I don't think, pick. Yeah, I don't think he's got too much else going for him in terms of that. I mean, he's catchable in every game since he's been introduced, which blows my mind. Because I constantly forget he exists as a Pokemon. And I yeah. feel... Like, he is such a garbage design Pokemon. If I had to say I have a least favorite Pokemon, I think it would be Basculin. I I really just don't enjoy him as a as a design. He was actually thrown into Gen 5 because there were not enough Water-type Pokemon. Like, yeah. that's the reason. There yeah. is a confirmed interview with Ken Sugimori that states just that. Yeah, he was... I'm, er- I'm literally reading it right here. <laughs> yeah, Basculin was honestly just dropped into the game because they decided there weren't enough water type Pokemon in Unova, which is technically correct. There weren't a lot of water type Pokemon in Unova. So yeah. It's uh it's not great. It's unfortunate and it makes me sad. 
It it makes me really really sad. <laughs> I did like how uh, in the games, like one would have uh, more of a prevalence than the other. Mm-hmm. Oh and yeah, like, it like, depends system. on the version you have. Mm-hmm. Um, which version you have determines which basculin you get. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, I just I'm just so disgusted by. You gotta him. buy both games to get both basculin. Yeah, it just <laughs> it's so disgusting to me. I just hate this Pokemon. It's just not a it's not a good design. It's not like that cute of a gimmick. And I just don't think it's that great overall. Can I, you get it after Gen 5 even? Yes, you can. Like, it's it's been available in every game since Gen 5. Like where do you catch it? Uh in, in the water. Where, in X and Y, Route 15, 16, Lavar City, Kuraway Town, Frost Cavern, Pokemon Village, Victory Road. Oh uh, wow. Route 21. In uh, in sun in ultra sun and ultra moon you can't get it on sun and moon but in ultra sun and ultra moon you can get it at Brooklyn Hill Molly Garden Vast Pony Canyon wow it's uh, depressing how how easy <laughs> it is to get one I, I can't I can't find a shiny Pokemon to save my life but you know what you can find a Basculin let and me it tell looks you just the same <laughs> I want a shiny Basculin I don't know if shiny if uh fish chain fish chaining uh chaining fish is uh, still a thing or not. I don't think it is. Also, shiny basculin looks nothing different. It's just like a lighter, yeah. more disgusting. It green. is literally a it's brightened <laughs> green, and so, that is it. This makes me so unhappy. Why? Why can't you at least have a good shiny? Invert the colors. <laughs> All right, I, we should probably move on to the next segment before Thatch, you know, gets ha- really has a angry. problem. I'm losing my <laughs> mind. I don't. Does basculin <laughs> even have a TCG card? I uh, don't even think so. It does. Me, it does. We lied. Yeah, it should, yeah. <laughs> it hasn't had a TCG card since Black and White Next Destinies. Ouch. There, there are so four... he's currently out of circulation. Am I correct with reading that? <laughs> uh he's in he's still he's still usable in expanded. Uh, <laughs> he's not very not good. Masculine deck. Yeah, he's uh the, the next destinies one that came out. Uh, for one colorless energy, he can use Bite for 10 damage. And for one water energy, he can use bar- Barred Fangs for 40 damage. Which, if before this Pokemon does damage, the defending Pokemon has no damage counters on it. This attack does nothing. Good job, Basculin. Feeling real oh. strong. Oh, that's bad. What a scary card. There were two of them in the black and white emerging powers. Uh, for one for one colorless, he could use Tackle. For a water and a colorless, he could use Splatter, which does 30 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Get good. Um, the the other one. He's so angry. <laughs> the other one was uh, a colorless energy. You could do flail ten times uh, the number of damage counters on Basculin. For <laughs> this is an insane. Uh, this is an insane energy cost. For uh, for a water energy and a double colorless, you could use Final Gambit for eighty damage. Flip two coins. If both of them are tails, this Pokemon does eighty damage to itself, which is the exact number of HP this Basculin has. Oh. So it could kill itself before it does 20, anything. 25% chance. Finally... <laughs> okay, just masculine's bad. Time to, Wait, time to... <laughs> one more. The original black and white set, Basculin, for two water energy, you can do crunch for 30 and flip a coin if heads discard an energy attached to the defending Pokemon. I want the Puckle record keeper, whoever holds that position, to mark it down right now. October 6, 2018, at roughly 11.50 a.m. Central U.S. time, a new meme for Thatch was born. <laughs> it's just such a, it's such a weird Pokemon. I just Basculin. (laughs) And you're going to like one of the trivia facts for Basculin. Oh, yeah? I'll get to that eventually because there's three of them. Well, go for it now. Do it. All right. We kind of hit on this, but there's some reasoning behind it, and it's a little bit weird, too. In Pokemon Black and White, Blue Stripe Basculin have the same two standard possible abilities as Red Stripe Basculin, Reckless and Adaptability, and is listed in the Pokedex 3D, if you even still use that. I have it. (laughs) However, the Blue Stripe Basculin can be obtained via in-game trade in white, has the ability Rockhead. In Pokemon Black 2 and White 2, while Blue Striped Basculin's two standard possible abilities are Rockhead and Adaptability, while Red Stripe Basculin stay the same. 
However, Blue Stripe Basculin bred in Pokemon Black 2 and Y2 have Reckless and Adaptability as their two standard abilities. When a Blue Stripe Basculin with Reckless is transferred from Gen 5 to Gen 6, its ability is changed to Rockhead. That makes absolutely no freaking sense. Moving on. No, that's Basculin exactly how it's supposed to be because it's not supposed to have Reckless anymore. So that makes sense. It's just all this breeding and all this. this <laughs> it's Speed Boost uh, Scolipede all over again because they changed... Ooh. They changed it from Quick Feet to Speed Boost. And so if you had a Quick Feet, Whirlipede, or Scolipede, you, and you transferred it over, it became Speed Boost. For Basculin. So, second one. Basculin shares its category with Zwilus. They're both known as the hostile Pokemon. And finally, and this is going to be Thatch's favorite, Basculin's Pokedex entries in Pokemon Black 2, White 2, X, and Omega Ruby describe the species as being very tasty. One of the rare instances that hint at Pokemon being used for food. Because that's the only thing it's good for. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. It's not it's really my... based on bass, so it makes sense. Whoa, blow my mind. Yeah, that's some real just, trivia just, for you. I just still love its origin that Bulbapedia is saying. Basculin is most likely inspired by bass or piranha, the latter of which has historically been viewed as violent. According to interviews with Ken Sugimori and Nintendo Dream, Basculin was created late in development when they realized there were very few new standard fish-like Pokemon in Unova, the only others being Alomomola, Stunfisk, Frillish, and Jellicent. It was given to forms to make up for the small amount of fish in the region, and based on a Basque sense, there, there are wild bass in New York State. It is literally a placeholder. What a garbage reason to exist, Basculin. <laughs> it's nice. so bad. All Get right. in my belly. That is it for Basculin. If you want to hear more Pokemon goodness, you can check out Puckle Discord and PucklePodcast.com. We are going to head it on over, guys, to the mailbag. It's mail time! It's time for the mailbag! And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag, as always, is brought to you by the energy drink. Green Toro is the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves. And as always, we'll give away the Green Taurus badge if anybody sparks some good conversation. So uh, if you're new to the show, this is the part of the show where we read listener emails. You just send an email to us at pucklepodcast at gmail.com. We always have a, uh, a mailbag prompt, but you can just send us anything. Whatever your thoughts are, whatever you want us to talk about. We, we're more than happy to read it. We'll probably read it because we are uh, we just like reading your emails. So I yeah. believe uh, the last last week, because Meltan was out, we wanted to know your opinions on Meltan. So let's jump right on into these emails. The first one is from Hiker J. I've been listening to the podcast since New Game Rumors. Let's get started. It is such a quality podcast that I've been tuning in ever since. It's my favorite thing about a Monday. Great job. I wanted to write in and talk a minute about why I'm excited for Let's Go. I've played Pokemon since I was 10 years old when Red Blue came out. Battling was fun because no one knew anything except I like this Pokemon, so I use it. Over time, it became much more complicated with IVs, EVs, egg moves, abilities, natures, and held items. No longer, I like this one. Instead, Smogon says I should use this one. I don't play online because I know I'll never win. So my gameplay consists of playing through the game, breeding a new team, then restarting the game with that team. Let's go, however. Seems like it removes all of this and gets back to simpler times. Everyone is on an even playing field again, whether you play a lot or a little. While I'll always play core games and love them, I'm excited about battling again and let's go and standing a chance at winning. Thanks for your time, Hi Hiker J. Woo! I do think that is the whole reason that Let's Go does exist, is just to include more people by oh, dumbing yeah. down the com the complexities of battling that we have now. You know there are going to be people who transfer over, you know, in the hopes of getting like full 15 IV teams or whatever. I think they're going to be super disappointed then. And this is my explanation because they do actually transfer over into real Pokemon stats, right? Because in Pokemon Go, you have attack, defense, and HP. Those are your three stats. And those are what you get IVs in. And when they get transferred over to Let's Go, it goes to back to the traditional stat system that we have in Pokemon. It goes to the 0 to 31 for IVs. 
and it goes to um, it, EVs do exist in this game just in a different way. Um, we do have natures. The only thing we're really missing are abilities. And I think that's honestly the good way to do it because that's where you can kind of get that guy who stopped playing after Gen 2. You're just like, hey, come and play Pokemon. And he's like, yeah, this is the Pokemon I remember. There's no abilities. There's nothing else. And then he goes, well, you know what? That was 20 years ago. I wish this was a bit, much, a bit more difficult. There's a little bit more depth to it. And then 2019 rolls around and you get Pokemon, I don't know, plus and minus or uh, you, get, <laughs> you get Pokemon Thatch and Scrawn version and you, you take it. And you go and yeah, that's what I've decided. That's that's yep. the new meme. Until they announce the names, uh, it's going to be Thatch and Scrawn version. It's only it's only because Scrawn and I have a, have a rivalry. I'm the third one that's released later down yeah. the line. And then and then in 2021 we get Pokemon Viger, and so we and so we have Thatch and Scrawn version come out, and people are just like, yeah, I really want to. That sounds quite interesting. Like there's abilities now on Pokemon. That's something cool. Because uh, what I'm really uh, the one thing I'm not excited for, I, I'm a member of a few Pokemon Go groups on Facebook, and when Meltan was dropped, the the number one thing that boiled my blood more than anything that I kept seeing pop up on my Facebook feed was I tried to catch an unknown, the first unknown I've ever seen, and it turned into a ditto. And I'm like, you tried to catch a Meltan, you're you're an you idiot. don't realize how important <laughs> this is. You've never <laughs> seen an unknown, have you? You don't know what that is. You don't know what you're talking about. He's probably calling it an unknown, but spelled like the English word and not the Pokemon name. <laughs> I don't know what an unknown is. I, I'm not looking forward to like people playing Let's Go and talking about that on these Discord things, on the Discord or on the Facebook or whatever, about, about Let's Go and being like, wait a second, why are the IVs not out of 15? and some Or something like that. And it gets really gross and it's really weird because people are going to be like, no, that's not how you, this is. It, it's good. It's going to be like explaining. It, it's it's like trying to reteach people Pokemon from going from Pokemon Go to real Pokemon. I mean, it, it's good because I guarantee you we're going to pick up a lot of players for Thatch and Scrawn version. And <laughs> I, this isn't going away for a while. It's just and. It, I, I assume we're going to pick up a lot of players for the 2019 game. That's great. That's fantastic. And I think maybe the computer, competitive community will thrive. I don't know if the VGC scene will thrive. I still think that takes a very certain type of person, and I don't think the Pokemon Go crowd is that type of people. That is that is the majority of the casual audience. Uh, the, the Pokemon. I think you'll still grab some competitive people from that, yeah. especially the. Well, of course, there's always those. There's always those few that join in like that. Yeah. You're going to get the people who are very into the quote-unquote meta of Pokemon Go, and they're going to realize there's a meta in competitive Pokemon, and you're going to see some of them float in. I'm not saying... I'm saying there's going to be a pretty small conversion rate from Let's Go Pikachu to full-time competitive battler. I wouldn't say it's something on the order of, like, 1% to 5%, but Mm -hmm. I think you'll still see a conversion. And I think you'll see a conversion of Let's Go players to full-on Pokemon players. I think you'll see a conversion of something like... I don't know. I I, I could see, like, 20 to 50%. That's a pretty yeah. wide range, but I think you could see a significant number of people go, man, I haven't played a real Pokemon game in a while. Well, I shouldn't say real because somebody will be upset because they'll be like, well, let's go with a real Pokemon game. Yeah, well, I'm missing 680 some Pokemon. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> six, I'm missing 656 Pokemon. So I, I let's let's not do this right now. When we get a more traditional Pokemon game, I think people will be like, hey, I want to jump into a traditional Pokemon game again. And we'll see that happen. Um, I, I do hope a couple of the features transfer over. I think it would be really interesting to see the Pokemon in the overworld and the way they've done it. Um, though I think it takes away a little bit of the mystery in terms of random encounters. I like that mystery that, that Pokemon has in their random encounters. I, I, a little part of the the sadistic part of me or the masochistic part of me, I should say, really likes when I'm really frustrated trying to find that 1% encounter chance. Yeah. Right. I'd rather not have a visual representation of like, oh, there's that 1% right there. Well, I'm 100% going to get it. Huh. And you know it's because of the implementations of let's of how Pokemon Go displays it. Oh, it's like, yeah. oh, these are the Pokemon in your area. Go yeah. for them. It's I just that's literally how it's being interpreted. It's it's a very good quote-unquote dry run for the new game. And mm-hmm. it's a very, I, I, think, I think we're going to see the exact same Pokemon models. Because the HD Pokemon models look fantastic. Oh and yeah, absolutely. I think we're gonna get those exact Pokemon models when we go. Venusaurm confirmed frog. <laughs> I mean, that was that we knew that. But, <laughs> yeah, people were surprised because they're not they're not like hardcore fans like we are. So yeah, 
Uh, okay, but we'll we'll leave that email. Thanks for that, Hiker J. We really appreciate it. Uh, so our Tell your email, friends. Yeah, our <laughs> next email is. I I do appreciate that he's listened and he really enjoys the show. Yeah. Uh, but this next one is from Crossmog. And I've got this one. Hello, Puckle Crew. Crossmog writing in again. And he's actually or he she. I think it's she. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, don't no, no. It doesn't matter. They're talking about Meltan this time. So I think Meltan might be a deoncy like situation where it was a mutation of Carbink that became a mythical. I think Meltan could be a mutation of Ditto. It looks like a it looks like just the look It looks like a just like liquid metal did I cannot talk today. It's, well, it, it doesn't help that like it wasn't a thought through sentence when it was written. Yeah. It looks like a liquid metal did di- yeah, don't say that too fast. Also, Ditto has an exclusive held item like metal powder is something that never made sense to me until now. Or maybe Meltan is an ancient form of Ditto and the metal powder is just remnants of the past. Anyways, that's all I have for right now. What are y'all's thoughts? I mean, it's entirely possible that that could be the case. I think a clink got stuck in a Ditto. Yeah. <laughs> So I have I have two separate there uh, two separate comments for this. Uh, the first being, I don't think it has any relations to Ditto. Though the metal powder thing that Crossmog brought up is really interesting and it's a uh, it's food for thought. Uh, but I think that has more to do with the original evolution for Ditto in the gold and silver beta it was supposed to evolve, I believe, with metal coat or the metal powder. One of the two. It was a trade evolution, and you can get this evolution of Ditto, which looked horrifying. And, <laughs> Uh, so I, I think that's kind of where the metal powder comes from. I, yeah. I And I think the resemblance to Ditto comes from there's only so many ways to give a blob arms and arms and feet and make it look like a thing, right? You can you can only shape it in such a way because Ditto is just a blob of, I don't know, goo. Uh, it, it reminds me of... Uh, this is going to... Just gonna, a blob of DNA. This this <sighs> this dates me, but it, it uh, reminds me of Gak from when I was yeah. a kid. And... <laughs> And I, Don't I really, worry, I'm 26. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> I, it reminds me. It reminds me of Gak, and that's that's what Ditto reminds me of. I mean, there's only so many ways you can make a blob uh, have arms, and I mean, Meltan and is only a, three. And there's only three ways. There's the Ditto way. There's the Grimer way, and there's the Muck way. And there's the Melt. Yeah, and essentially, right. And so we end up having Meltan because he's just a blob of solder. And so I wouldn't look too much into the Ditto Ditto connection with. Um, with Meltan because Ditto is the thing that can turn into anything. And so they're having it turn into Meltan because they didn't want you to actually catch Meltan in Pokemon go yet. Uh, or then you wouldn't buy let's go to get Meltan. So that's kind of my thought there. Um, also, uh, the fun one that I think I said this last week, I don't remember if I said this last week. I know I said it probably, I know I said it off air. I don't know if I said it on air, but my favorite thing is this piece of artwork that I saw recently for Meltan, and it was uh, it was a ditto that spray painted itself silver, and it was holding up a nut, and Kecleon uh, was inside of the nut, and it turned invisible. And you know how you can still see the stripe on the Kecleon when it turns invisible, and that's its little <laughs> tail, and the, you can see the eyeball of the Kecleon in the nut of uh, Meltan as well. So that's that. That was my favorite piece of artwork. Um, so that's what I think Meltan is. I think it's just a spray painted ditto holding up a nut. With the Kecleon inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but uh, to be honest, I think it's just another mythical. Because that brings us up to four mythicals in Gen 7, which is kind of the standard. I must say kind of, because Gen 6 only had three. But, I mean, they were doing something different with Gen 7, obviously, in that they were slowly rolling them out in games. Because Zero Aura is not in Sun and Moon. It's only an Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And yeah. Meltan would make it four all together and so you can kind of think of Meltan as <laughs> this is really bad equivalence the fourth mythical and if you were to look at the previous fourth mythicals we had Arceus so that's kicking off things pretty strong and then I believe the other one was oh man so in uh it we had uh Victini Keldeo no no uh, gen five uh Victini Keldeo Meloetta and then what's the Genesect. one after Genesect. Genesect Genesect instead uh so you had Arceus Genesect and then now Meltan which I think is all reasonable. And Mel- I think it just further confirms that Let's Go is probably a Gen 7 game because Meltan is a Gen 7 Pokemon by its index number and 
because the first Pokemon they usually reveal as a mythical for the second genera- for the for a new generation. And I, I guess it's been a while since I said this because the last time I mentioned it was during the Magirna reveal. Was that all of the designs for Pokemon, uh, mythical wise, like the first mythical, that's like Mew, has something in its design that tells you what generation it's from. And a good example of this is something like Magirna. When Magirna was revealed, the first thing I did was I counted the number of cogs on its head because there are seven for Generation 7. If you look at something like Manaphy, Manaphy's got four dots on its forehead because it's Gen 4. And that's about it. So definitely, I mean, that that's how I feel about Meltan. He's a Gen 7 Pokemon. So I, I think that's it for the mailbag, though. I think that's everybody. So thank you for sending in your emails. If you would like to email us next week, you could do so by checking us out at, or sending us an email at pucklepodcast.com and letting us know what is a useless feature you never used in Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you yeah, could you remember. Say that wasn't already said if you uh, you could always, yeah, if it was already said, let us know. But we want to know what you, what you like and what you haven't done. So uh, I believe that's it. Uh, is there any, do you want to give the Green Taurus badge to either of these people? Um. I think we could give it to uh, Hiker McGay. Hiker J. Hiker J. <laughs> Hiker J. You said it wrong. Oh, oh, my bad. You put an M in there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, my, he is, I had seen that name recently. My bad. Yeah. Hiker <laughs> Hiker J. Uh, we will give it to him. I mean, I like I like it too because he said good things about our podcast. So <laughs> <laughs> he stroked our egos a little bit. Yeah. He stroked- it's not. It's not writing a poem. But, anymore uh, no that's that's not how you do it anymore you oh you make me, um you make me happy next podcast i'm in the first person to mention a steampunk moose pokemon gets the green steampunk music but we have to remember <laughs> this and i'm not going to uh, <laughs> all right so that is going to be it for the show today guys if you want to have more puckly awesome goodness you should come to the puckle discord the link is in the description or you can find it on our twitter on our website everything pucklepodcast.com as well as all the links to our socials including facebook twitter reddit i think those are all the socials we really care about uh you can go ahead and check out those if you want to help out the show in monetary ways you can go to twitch.tv slash the puckle podcast and just hang out with me and jushiro maybe drop some bits in that's if you don't that's fine but if you have twitch prime you can subscribe to us for free and we'd really appreciate that uh you also get a new emoji exclusive to twitch we i finally uploaded a twitch emoji for us it is a burn heel that just says burn so you guys can get that if you're if you're a subscriber on our twitch uh, you could also go ahead and help us out on Patreon if you would like. You could go to patreon.com slash pucklepodcast, get a, a host of rewards, including being able to get such Pokemon as the elusive Margaret Alolan Golem. Yes! Uh, the Alolan Golem. However, it's probably going to be a better Pokemon than a shiny Alolan Golem this uh, this month. So <laughs> you could definitely do that. You could also get catch the exclusive Patreon-exclusive uh, PTU podcast that's up there if you want to do that. Viger's a part of that. And you yeah. can, of course... Uh, if you want to get something physical instead, you one, you could get cool Puckle TCG cards, or you can go ahead and go to our Tee Public store where we have a few things, including uh, awesome t-shirts for all of the various uh, sponsors. I'm putting this in quotes, sponsors for the show, such as, uh, I, I keep getting, I, I need to stop with the Driftblim Daycare, but we have, of course, La Cola and uh, other various Altaria designs. Altaria Air. Altaria Air. I, I forgot, recent. I realized Toxic recently... Pepsi. I talked about this last week, but I didn't realize until recently that you can get posters at Tee Public. So oh, yeah. you can get <gasps> a poster of these things, oh, my God. which is amazing. Uh, you can also get I canvas. A check is for. So <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely check those things out over uh, our Tee Public store. All of these links are in our description. We really hope to see you guys there. If not, just come and hang out with us at the Discord. So until then, I am Trainer Thatch. I am Scrun. And I am Viger. And here in the Lavender Sound Radio Tower, it's closing time.
Thanks to everybody at our patron for supporting this show. Thank you to Viger, Duly Noted, Ten Little Men, Andrea, The Fluffy as Whimsicott, Dr. Shamu, Snag, Dexio, Jushiro, Rotted Mushroom, Bosephus, Alvarin, Seth Vilo, Minor Manetric, Claude Nine, The Beauty and the Geek, John, R. Sigma, Doc McStuffles, Nathan, The Golden Klefki, Trevor, TJ, Doc Knox, Shambles, Bird Keeper Cobra, Daniel, Trey B31, Greg, Alec, Mikey, Ozzy, Jedi DJ, The British Gent, Sparky, Nick, Dylan, Shira, Ironcaster, Orange Avenger, Michael, Clifford, Joseph, Hazelnut, Thomas, Michael, Curtis, Echo, Anime, Gravy, Travis, Inferno, 235, Alex, and The Real EV. Because of you guys, we can do a lot of cool stuff. And just a reminder, you can get an Alolan Golem named Margaret that is shiny just by depositing a Dupider named Puckle onto the GTS until Thursday, October 4th. So go and do that if you want to get some cool free stuff, guys. I can't wait to talk to you guys later, and I will catch you on the flip-flop.